This is the 2022 Spider FX19 Vapor, and today I'm going to review it. Hey y'all, my name is Captain Shane York. I'm a charter captain here in the New Orleans area. I own uh, Grip and Lips Fishing. Uh, we specialize in inshore fishing for redfish, speckled trout, and all that. Uh, do a lot of fly fishing, do a lot of sight fishing, and just do a lot of regular, regular fishing. So today is going to be an in-depth review of my 2022 uh, Spider FX19 Vapor. Um, I've had it about two months now. Uh, I've done a lot of fishing out of it. I've done a lot of char charter trips out of it already. And uh, I'm going to give you my, uh, my review on the boat from a charter guide's uh, perspective. I'm going to show you what I love about the boat and a few things that I wish were done different. There's really nothing that I hate about the boat there's just a few things i wish were different but i'm gonna give you all my honest opinion and no i'm not sponsored by uh by composite research uh ink boats or spider or anybody like that this is just my honest opinion i know when i was uh researching this boat uh, i went all over youtube trying to find every video i could about the boat uh before i pulled the trigger on the boat just to make sure it's what I wanted. So today is going to be uh, my review of it, um, and uh, hope it helps y'all to make a, a better buying decision. And uh, see what y'all think about the boat. Uh, please hit that subscribe button, y'all. Uh, really trying to grow my channel. I've got about 200 videos out as of today, and I'm still less than a thousand subscribers. Uh, please I'll... hit that subscribe button, y'all. Like the video if you like it. Leave a comment that helps the algorithm, and share the video. All right. <laughs> y'all first thing i'm gonna do is a quick walk around uh just to show y'all the boat like i said this is the spider vapor fx19 um so it's 19 feet long i believe it's six feet 11 inches wide so almost seven feet wide uh mine came equipped with the the yamaha sho it's a 115 uh gas mileage is pretty good on here um, it has a 28 gallon fuel tank. I have ran all over y'all, all, all over, um, and still had gas to make it back. So, uh, it gets, like I said, it gets pretty good gas mileage. I usually run, I, I'm not a speed demon on mine. If I keep mine around, uh, 30 to 35 miles an hour, um, I can get four to five miles to the gallon on the boat um, my little push pole on here uh, it does have mine came with the the platforms on the front and the back um, it's got the rail uh, this right here just slides in and out uh, most of the time I don't use it I do have a camera mounted there I do a lot of filming so sometimes I'll have it up there for uh, you know for filming fish and stuff like that um if you do a lot of fly fishing if you do get some uh some older clients or or people that that want more stability you know they can lean on this thing um it, it does push down in there further i'm just kind of kind of sitting there right now or you can undo uh undo the uh the little chain right there flip this around and they can lean forward on it also if they want to do that to fit to to fish out you know use it for for fly fishing that way or or even if they're not fly fishing just to lean up lean forward on it a little bit 
just make sure you tighten this thing down um you of course you can hand tighten it but then it's got a little hole right here and uh what i do is i actually got a little uh a little uh wrench i stick in there i stick through the hole and i tighten it down real tight so i don't have to worry about it moving uh also has um and this one's built into the boat it has a, a polling platform on the back right here uh it's sturdy i get up there all the time uh when we're sight fishing when I'm, we're fly fishing stuff i get up there and uh you know do the polling thing and point fish out to people and stuff like that uh this rack on top right here is also removable it just slides out and it slides down into your rocket launcher uh uh rod holders just like the ones up front so that slides out and it's got a little rocket launcher holder up top for you if you want to keep it in you can use it for a rod holder um i've been leaving it on here lately because i've been mounting i've been mounting a uh a gopro up there to get video it's, it's a really good spot i can mount a gopro up there shoot it over the whole front end of the boat and uh it can see uh it can see me while i'm fishing and stuff like that so works pretty good uh, okay y'all i'm going to start with the compartments and the storage on the boat and i'm going to show you a few things uh that i like and then some things that i wish was done different uh, we'll start with the compartments first um, and we're going to start with the the front one right here now when you have this your uh your platform on here obviously this one right here is hard to open up all the way so it, it might it probably won't stay since i've got the uh the compartment on here hey, though it's like but. i said if you had the platform on there this won't open up all the way and stay and then also you have a uh bait well right here uh, that's another thing you you can move this out of the way and get it to open but it's not going to open up all the way and stay either so uh, you need to pull your uh, your sight your sight casting platform down um, in order to have those compartments open up all the way and stay. All right, y'all. Let's start with this uh, front this front uh, storage area right here. Um, mine came rigged a certain way. Yours might come a little different, but mine came rigged with uh, the trolling motor plug right here to plug in a trolling motor. Um, which I do have a trolling motor. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in while I'm thinking about it actually It, it was so, rigged for dual 12 volt batteries So right here, which is not here anymore was the plug um, For your 12 volt battery where you can uh, or for your 12 volt battery charger It had a it had a dual bank charger up front uh, I'm gonna show you what I did differently. So right now this plug's not here and I, I've just got something else sticking there for now. Okay, the only thing that I don't like about this compartment right here, and by the way, y'all, I just use this compartment mostly for my net and I put uh, a rope or something up here. I think it's, you know, a lot of times people use this front compartment for a anchor compartment. The only thing is you're not gonna wanna do that on this boat anyway. If you do, you're gonna destroy your your boat. So you don't want to, you do not want to use it for an anchor compartment. Uh, so the only thing I don't like about this compartment, y'all, there's no lip. And I understand that it has a cutout right here for your, uh, for your wires, you know, for your cables, for your trolling motor. So you could probably still get water in there somehow. This might've, might've could have been done differently. Maybe, maybe they could put the trolling motor plug down here somewhere i know not everybody uses a trolling motor but most people do uh even me as a fly fishing guide uh, I'm, i use the trolling motor a lot of times I, i'm not always pulling the boat around so i wish there was a lip around this y'all because there's not so if it rains or every time you wash the boat this is going to get water in it so you can't really use this as a, as a dry compartment now while you're fishing you know it shouldn't get wet unless it rains but if it rains water is going to get in here so that's this is the one compartment that i really wish uh something was done differently like i said maybe they could have put the the trolling motor plug somewhere up here on the side i'm going to go over the, the whole trolling motor thing here in a little bit but yeah i, I would have put it on the side somewhere probably now the way this boat was rigged each one of these compartments right here 
had a on the side right here had a um, battery box located uh, back here in the back for a 12 volt battery so they had it rigged for a 24 volt system obviously so what they did is they had cables run to one side and then cross over uh, to the other side I removed uh, both of the battery boxes out of here and and uh, also moved the battery charger to the back so what I use this front one here for now, I, I store my um, life jackets and stuff up here. Life jackets, seat cushion, um, fire extinguisher, all that goes in this front compartment right here. So that, that's where that goes. Okay, y'all, I dropped the trolling motor right here just so I could open this compartment and uh, go over. Uh, so this right here, what I did with mine, I removed the, the battery tray that was back here in the back. I put my 24 volt lithium battery right here. Um, one battery you know one 24 volt is about 48 pounds and will last days you know you could probably get two to three days out of it compared to having two regular 12 volt batteries that are going to add a lot more weight to your boat and all that so uh if you have the means to do it i would definitely go with a, a lithium battery it's going to save a lot of weight and they they last about 10 years or so uh the warranty on this one alone is uh five years so um i added my uh my 60 amp um uh, resettable uh fuse right here um that's what that is right here and the thing that was sticking out of the front while ago that i showed y'all this is just my plug-in for my lithium uh for my lithium battery here so um i didn't put the lithium battery charger in the boat uh i just i don't need it in the boat um i, I got it in the boat shed and I just plug this in to the lithium battery charger and the lithium battery it charges in a matter of, of minutes anyway so on a normal day um, it does not take long at all for me to charge the whole battery up so uh, in this compartment also is where the there was a uh, a two bank um, uh, battery charger right here I, I moved it to the back I'm going to show you all that in a little bit all right let's move on down to the back storage areas okay on this side this is actually a release well i've got water in it from yesterday i was supposed to do a charter today y'all and uh they canceled so i just left the ice in there from from yesterday so on this side right here you have a release well so i i, I use this right here to put ice in for fish um, I'll show you where I put my drinks here in a little bit, but anyway, that's what I use this one for. I put a plug in it. Uh, if you do not plug, um, if you do not put a plug right here in the back, y'all, uh, you're going to get water inside here. And also remember, cause I, I didn't do this. There's a cutoff valve on the top of these right here. So the first time I took it out, I was like, why did my you know, why did my ice thing fill up with water? Well, it's because I forgot to turn this off like a goofball. So just remember to turn that off. All right, so that's what's on this side. Let's go around to this other side right here. So on this side is where you've got your, and this is how mine was rigged. Yours might be rigged a little bit different. This is where you got your main battery cut off right here. Your 12 volt battery your 12 volt battery is actually right back here in the back of the of the boat so that's where that is uh it did not come with a battery charger yours may i, I don't know uh but mine didn't and also right here is where uh, the uh pump is for the power pole is my my boat came with an eight foot power pole uh which was pretty sweet that it was already rigged on there and right here what i did i took the battery charger from up front the, the dual bank battery charger that was made for you know since they had it rigged for two 12 volt batteries up front i took that moved it back here and hooked it up to the uh cranking battery so i would have a uh a battery charger for my cranking battery and again instead of instead of cutting another hole in the boat and making this look all fancy this is my plug for it right here i just open this compartment plug the extension cord in 
when I when I get done, which usually takes it maybe two minutes to charge, may, maybe five, because it, you know it's going to charge off your alternator anyway. I just close it back up and stick it right here. And you know, I just I want to do that instead of cutting another hole in the boat. I hate cutting holes in the boat, drilling holes in the boat. So I, I did uh, put I, I just moved this myself, y'all. It's not hard to do. Put this back here, hooked up to the battery. So now I have a a uh, battery charger hooked into my to my battery. So that's that's this rear compartment right here. Okay, y'all, let's go over this right here real quick. This uh, obviously this seat right here opens up either this way, which is cool. This is what I use to actually uh, put my drinks in. I put my bottled waters down in here, but this is a live well. Uh, I put my bottled waters down here, dump ice on top of it. This is what I use for my drink. So it opens up like this, or it opens up like this, which for me makes it real easy to pour the ice in there in the morning time. So uh, that's what I use this right here for. So you might want to use it for a bait well. You might want to use it for a live well. I use it to put my, my drinks in. Um, the seat back right here kind of unsnaps. There's Velcro right here with a snap. And this right here slides off and makes it easy to get to all your, um, a lot of your connections and stuff are right here. Uh, so, your, and your, your fuse bus for your um, Yamaha and all that, or, or mine's mounted right here on the wall. So that makes it easy to get to. So that's what that is. Again, that just slides on there like that, which is cool. Remember, you have to kind of push that down to make it stay, y'all, because if you don't, uh, it's not gonna stay. Okay, y'all, on this side, um, these right here open up also, and you can get to all your electronics this way. So again, this opens up, you can get to all your electronics right here also as you can see that, that all your live wells and everything on here are insulated so that's that okay y'all while i'm here i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the uh, the instrument panel it does come with tilt steering you push the button in your steering wheel goes up or down whichever way you want it to go so it does have tilt steering um uh of course you got all your switches bilge pump navionics horn uh, this light does have court lights, which is your inside lights right here. You got two bait well switches, and this boat came with underwater lights, so that's this rigged right here also. It does have a 12 volt cigarette outlet style uh, plug in right here. I use that to plug in uh, my GoPro or one of my GoPros and my phone. Uh, this boat also came rigged with trim tabs. Uh, the trim tab um, switches are right here. Of course, Yamaha. Uh, I mounted my other. Um, I mounted my uh, power pole switch right here, and this this boat has a six-inch jack plate, so that's mounted here. Uh, it came with a seven-inch Simrad graph. Uh, the graph is fine. Um, I don't need a, a big 12-inch graph right here to see where I'm going. Most time, I know where I'm going anyway. The cool thing about this Simrad graph is. Um, Everything is tied into your Yamaha engine, so you don't have the your regular Yamaha gauges anywhere on here. It's all tied into the graph. It works. Uh, I checked my hours right before I started the video, and this boat's at 39.1 hours now. So, okay, y'all, let's talk about these uh, the the rod storage. Of course, you have three um, you have three rocket style rocket launcher style storage on each side of the console. You can use those. Um, but you also have this storage right here, which is cool. Something unique about this storage right here. Um, you can walk on this. You know, you got, you got plenty of room to walk around. And believe me, when we're out here pulling in 35, 40 pound bull redfish, uh, you know, you, they'll circle the boat with you three or four times. So we, we've all walked across this many times and it works fine. To open it up, you just turn the handle right here. This, this slides open. Um, and you got rod storage up under here uh, for three rods. So you're probably wondering why I have two fly rods going in the same side right here, and instead of using these, uh, instead of using these separate compartments. Well, it's because your fuel tank is located right up under here. 
which is great. You want that weight forward anyway to keep the weight off the back of your boat. You want to level out the weight so you can, you know, go in shallower water and everything. The only thing is, it's a 28 gallon tank, which is also awesome, but it comes pretty close to each edge of the boat right here. So, uh, if you have fly rods, the only, you know, most fly rods that people use for this, inshore, for, you know, for your inshore red fishing is normally an eight weight and normally a nine foot rod. Well, you're not going to be able to get them in these two, um, these two holders right here. They're only going to be able to fit right here. So I've got two uh, in one side right there. I want, I want to keep these in the boat just to show y'all, uh, just to demonstrate that, that they can only fit on this side right here. I've tried these other two, uh, but with the fly rods, they're just too long to f fit down in these other two right here because of your fuel tank being up front. So just want to demonstrate that. Close this back up. Of course, you have another uh, rod locker. Um, same thing on this side right here. Uh, but right now, I've got my push pole on there. So um, that's the reason I didn't open that side up for y'all. But you've got uh, enough storage for three more rod lockers on this side right here. Like I said, I can stand on here. I'm 200 and something pounds. I can stand on here, walk around. And like I said, we, we've chased bull reds all around this boat uh so they definitely work okay y'all while i'm up here i'm just going to quickly go over the um bait uh bait whales and um live whales on the boat let me close this right here so you, you've got two you've got a bait whale up front which is awesome uh, i rarely use i know a lot of a lot of guys use uh live shrimp and stuff Oh, well, there's a there's a little bit of rust right here, y'all, which is it's only about two months old. I, I just noticed that. So, um, that's just rusting. That's just a little rust right here on the underside of the glass. I'm gonna have to get something to put on that. So, you saw it here first, people. But anyway, uh, you've got a bait well right here up front that you can use for you know shrimp or you know croaker, whatever you want to put in here. Um, and then also back here this is your seat your seat actually picks all the way up and lifts out of there and then you have another bait well right here y'all same thing this one opens up another bait well right here uh i don't i don't use it at all um because my seat's normally there so i've got something comfortable to sit on um so anyway yeah that's your that's two bait whales uh we've already discussed right here next to it you've got your release whale which i use to uh like i said i put ice in there and i use that to put fish uh if people keep fish which is um you know kind of rare with your fly fishing but sometimes people keep fish and put them right there and then right here like i said is your your last one uh but i use this one to put ice and uh drinks in just makes it easy for me um, I know I could probably use a, a regular um, ice chest to put in here but then just taking more space up out of your boat all right let's move on to something else okay y'all speaking of seating uh, you have your I guess captain's chair right here um, like I said it is removable and then you also have these two remo removable cushions I put them in here just to show y'all but they unsnap uh, so if you do have um you know a couple of people you can have one person sit back here next to you uh, a lot of times though um what i do i usually leave those out and a lot of times people will sit right here next to each other it helps balance out the boat better and uh you know the seat's pretty big going across there so a lot of times they'll sit next to each other but if not I have had people come back here and sit next to me, which is cool also. You know, sometimes you get people, they want to ask questions on the way out, like, you know, how the fishing is or whatever. We can have some cool conversations so they can sit right there. All right, y'all, let's talk about the rear casting platform. I, I'm up here all the time. I did add uh, just a push pole holder right here, so this don't come with the boat, but I added that. But 
like I said, y'all, it's stable. I'm up here all the time uh, on our trips. Um, you know, this is where I stand and just control the boat and point fish out. And my clients are usually up front fishing and, uh, you know, it works out great. This right here is remov removable. This, this uh, backrest is behind me. Like I said, I've got it up here because um, a lot of times I'll have a, a GoPro running right here that can shoot over the whole boat so I can film. But you can remove this and you got two rocket launcher rod holders right here. Uh, also, your uh, nav lights are, are hooked up to this also. Okay, y'all, as I mentioned, your 28-gallon fuel tank is right here, which is great because it, it puts the weight towards the front of the boat. Okay, something that my boat came with, and I think a lot of the newer boats are coming with nowadays, is when I got that this, there was a check valve inside here. So for the first couple of days, I could barely put gas in here, y'all. I'd start to put gas, it overflow. I'd put gas, it overflow. So at first, I thought it was air in the tank, but it wasn't. It was a check valve. So if you get one of these... You're going to want to pull this check valve out. If, if you don't, you're never going to be able to put gas in the boat, y'all. It takes just a few minutes. Uh, undo, undo these screws. Take a big, long pair of needle nose and pull that check valve out. If not, you're not going to be able to put gas in the boat. Just make sure that uh, you're careful. Don't drop anything in your fuel tank when you do that. Or take it somewhere and have them do it. But you need, you need to pull that out. Uh, this boat actually came equipped with everything except for the trolling motor, y'all, which I'm about to go over the trolling motor situation here in just a second. But it did come fully equipped with everything except for the trolling motor. What I mean is came with a sound system. It came with the Simrad 7-inch graph. Uh, it came with the power pole. This one's got an 8-foot power pole. It's white, matches the boat, looks awesome. It came with the trim tabs on here which uh you know i use these all the time okay uh, y'all let's go over the the trolling motor so if you're like me and most people are going to want a remote control trolling motor nowadays so uh i went with the Minn Kota. all right this boat comes with a platform right here that's running this way with the boat that you would think your trolling motor would sit like this would sit going this direction uh on the boat but here's the only problem with that y'all if you do that there's not enough space to fit this on here because your trolling motor would have to stick out really far out here in front of the boat to actually go down and get into the water uh same thing i thought about turning it around backwards same thing it's not going to come out far enough It'd be way back here somewhere, so that's not going to work. So I looked at pictures of every spider vapor I could find, and every everybody had them mounted like this, straight with the boat. That's how everybody has it mounted. Um, that's how I mounted it. Uh, I did it myself. I hated drilling holes in the boat, uh, but that's what I did. All right, let's go over this. All right, y'all. So this is just the Shane, the old Captain Shane trying to help y'all out part so you're probably gonna have to mount the trolling motor like this um it's fine it works uh even with with fly fishing me and all my clients we have enough room when we're stripping our line line usually goes right here it works fine i haven't had this getting anybody's way um but just on windy days you know how fly line is it's going to go everywhere anyway so um It'll probably happen at some point, but I haven't had it happen yet. Uh, same thing with this trolling motor. There's just not a lot of deck space right here for the mount, y'all. So it it hangs over the side right here. I'm actually going to get, um, there's some people up here that can get a block. They can fabricate a block and then powder coat it to match the color of the, of the, the boat right here which will give me more deck space i'm gonna have that done i just haven't had it done yet so uh i would suggest that if you try to mount it diagonally like is right here i just don't know how you're gonna do it y'all you're gonna have the motor sticking way out front or this part of your motor is gonna be sticking way out here to the side 
uh, I did go with a 60 inch um, the reason why it has the spot lock um, I want the spot lock uh, I kind of need the spot lock for fishing speckled trout I'm not always fishing super shallow water y'all uh, I might be out fishing for bull reds or fishing for speckled trout and I need the spot lock sometimes if I'm in water that's uh, deeper than eight feet you know for my tr for my power pole or whatever so I do have the spot lock on here so that's the whole trolling motor thing I hope that helps some of y'all out um, like I said I researched the heck out of it found every picture I could but that's how I ended up doing the trolling motor okay y'all while I walk around the boat I'm gonna go over a few things that I had questions about and maybe this will help y'all out uh, they say this boat drafts in seven inches of water that's what spider says does it draft in seven inches of water? I can say yes and possibly shallower. Um, I have had this boat in super shallow water, y'all. Very shallow water. Um, I'll try to put some clips in here of some fishing trips where y'all can see the bottom and uh, you can see how shallow it is. But I've had this boat in very shallow water. I've had it so shallow that um, I've had to take the push pole and push myself off of stuff so yes it it goes it definitely drafts seven inches possibly shallower I don't want to say it does because I don't know but it definitely drafts very shallow y'all so if you want something you get in super shallow water with uh, this is definitely the boat for you you uh, uh, the dry weight on this boat as I believe is a thousand sixty or a thousand ninety pounds or something like that so let's talk about poling the boat, you know, using the pole when you're up there on the platform pulling it. Uh, the boat poles fine. Um, even obviously with people on the front or somebody on the boat or on the front, the boat poles fine. Uh, I've pulled it with a guy up here fishing on the front, guys sitting on the, the seat right here, um, fishing gear in the boat, ice in the boat, whatever. Uh, it does fine. Obviously, like any other polling skiff, on uh, windier days, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, again, another reason I had the trolling motor, y'all. Um, some people just think that trolling motors scare fish away all the time. And I can tell you, I come to within 5 to 10 feet of redfish all the time while on the trolling motor uh when we're out here sight fishing y'all so i don't really think it does some people think it does but um i just don't, i don't really think it does unless you're just got it on super high or just making a lot of racket uh you can troll around and be fine but i do pull the boat a lot also like i said it just depends on the big thing is wind if it's really windy if it's going to take me forever to pull the boat then i'm going to get on the trolling motor all right, y'all, like I said, this one came equipped with the Yamaha SHO 115. Uh, the boat does great. Uh, the fastest I've had it is probably about 40, 41 miles an hour. But also, I'm not a speed, de a speed demon, y'all. I'd rather save the gas. So a lot of times, I'll cruise around 30 to 35. I'm not trying to run the boat super fast everywhere. I'd rather save the gas and fish all day, honestly. As long as I can get to the fish, that's all that really matters to me. Um, This one does have the uh, the push pole holders that, that clip up and down. So what I normally do, um, I pretty much leave the push pole in the boat all the time unless, I just, unless I'm just not going to be going uh, super shallow that day. The push pole is always on the boat. And um, when we get out there and we start uh, fly fishing, obviously, I'm going to have this this pole back here on the on the back of the boat with me and i'm going to put these down it's just one more thing that your your fly line can get into um, all right y'all here's a shameless plug my name is captain shane that is my website right there it's grippinglipsfishing.com uh just a few of the sponsor stickers that that i have that are on the boat right there all right y'all again my name is captain shane uh gripping lips fishing uh, this has been my review on the Spider FX-19 Vapor. Uh, love the boat. There's very few things that I wish was done different on the boat. 
Uh, but if you're looking to get a phone skim, like I said, I am in no way sponsored by Spider. I wish I was. Spider, if you're watching, drop me a sponsorship. It'd be cool. By the way, I tag y'all in all my posts. But uh, the boat is nice. Uh, it drafts super shallow. It rides very stable. I've had this boat. Uh, I've taken this boat. If anybody knows anything about Louisiana, I've taken this boat all the way to the edge of the Gulf out there. Uh, I've had it in some rougher water, dust fine. Um, you're going to want to slow down. If not, you're going to spear some waves sometimes. But uh, I've had, I have had this thing in rough water. You just have to slow down with it. Um, it but it drafts super shallow. And when you're in light chop to smooth water, y'all, a lot of times my clients fall asleep. And they all tell me the boat just rides so smooth. So that's my review on the boat, y'all. Uh, please subscribe. Um, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Share the video. And uh, go to my website. It's grippinglipsfishing.com if you want to book a trip. Uh, you know, we stay busy down here. Louisiana's got some awesome red fishing. So thank y'all for watching.